You won't believe what's happening in the real estate market. Right now, it's tougher than ever to make that dream of owning a home a reality. We are talking record high prices and plummeting mortgage demand that's hitting a 27-year low. And to put salt in the wound, the housing shortage is only getting worse. Now, here's the million dollar question. Should you rent or buy? And which option is going to keep more bucks in your pocket in the long run? Today, we are digging deep into the numbers, doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the costs of renting and the real deal on home ownership, so you can apply to your current situation. I promise that you are going to be surprised by the results, because it might flip everything you thought you knew about this market upside down. Buckle up, it's showtime. Welcome to Need Zero Wealth Club, the place where impactful people come to get inspired. Before we start, if you find any of this valuable, all I ask in return is that you hit that like button, subscribe and share this video with someone who might find it useful. That's it. Your interaction is a terrific zero cost way to support our community. Okay, let's talk real estate. There is this popular notion that renting is like pouring money down the drain, while owning a house is the ultimate investment. But it's not that simple. Let's start with the nitty gritty of home ownership. Here's the first red flag. Most people just consider the basic mortgage cost and compare it with renting. They conclude that owning is just a little bit more expensive, making renting the bad guy. But as you are about to see, that's not entirely accurate. First up, you have to consider your down payment. Some companies offer a sweet deal of 1% down. I'm not endorsing anyone, but Zillow or Rocket Mortgage might ring a bell. However, in most cases, lenders expect 10 to 20% of the house price up front. That's a pretty penny right there. Then there's the mortgage interest rate, which is the cost of borrowing money. Currently, it's over 7%, the highest in two decades. That means 7% of your mortgage balance is vanishing into thin air every year. It adds up quicker than you think. If you're not splurging at least 20% down, you might also be stuck with the private mortgage insurance, aka PMI. It's an extra fee on top of your mortgage, usually between 0.5 to 2% of your mortgage balance every single year to protect the lender in case you stop paying. Don't forget property taxes. These vary widely based on your home's value and location. I'm leaving a link in the description for you to check out the specifics for Canada and US. If you are not in North America, I do recommend finding a local property tax calculator. You don't want any surprises here because it can easily add up to thousands of dollars on top of your existing payments and it is better to be mindful of the real number. If you thought we were done, you are mistaken, my friend. You'll need some insurance necessary for natural disasters or accidents. The average homeowner pays about $2,942 a year on a $400,000 home in the US. But brace yourself, the cost depends on many factors, including location, and some areas might not even offer coverage due to higher risks intensified by climate change. On top of that, there's maintenance. Your house won't stay shiny forever. Roof, water heater, paint, HVAC, everything has an expiration date. Plan on setting aside 1-2% to of your property's value annually for repairs that will eventually come up. I'm pretty sure you want to be prepared for when the bill comes due. Now let's break down the real cost of owning a real average home. Let's just take the example of buying this $400,000 home with a 10% down payment. You are starting at a $40,000 down payment, then $360,000 loan with a 7% interest rate, putting you at a monthly payment of $2,400. But hey, don't forget the lovely PMI, adding an extra $150 on top of that. Now we have the property taxes. 
tacking on an extra $385 each month. Insurance? Yep, that's an extra $200. And remember, you gotta set aside $330 for repairs and maintenance. So that's a total of $3,465 every month. This is an example in the United States, but you can replicate the same principles in your region. However, if you think it stops there, you are mistaken again. It's just the very beginning, but don't freak out just yet. Every time you pay that mortgage, a part of it chips away at the loan balance, almost like you are building a savings account. You are looking at a first year savings of $3,656, approximately $304 every month. Plus, you can deduct the mortgage interest from your income up to $750,000 of loan, saving about $2,500 a year, roughly $208 a month. That means, with all those savings factoring, your monthly cost drops to $2,955. But wait, we are not done. You also need to consider the opportunity cost for tying up that $40,000 from your down payment. You could have invested it elsewhere, taking an average of 6% return, that's $200 a month, right out of your pocket for the sake of buying a property. So after all the calculations, taking into account mortgage equity, tax savings, the opportunity cost, you're looking at a solid $3,155 a month. But hold on, there is more to consider, like the long-term home appreciation. Sure, it keeps pace with inflation, but historically, it doesn't beat the S&P 500 index. Over the past 30 years, the S&P 500 has been delivering an average of 7.19% yearly return adjusted for inflation, while residential real estate has seen an appreciation of 1.97% after inflation. So it's vital to look at the big picture, not just the final number. But hey, don't forget about those rising property taxes, insurance costs, and maintenance expenses. Let's assume that your home appreciates by 1% each year. That's $330 in your pocket every month. So after accounting for all these factors, the real cost of owning a $400,000 paradise comes down to approximately $2,825 a month. Now, before we dive deeper into the juicy details, let's talk about rent. Simple and straightforward, the price you see is the price you pay. No hidden surprises. So the big question looms. Can you rent a $400,000 home for less than $2,825 a month? Well, according to this chart here, the answer is yes. In fact, in most major cities across US and Canada, renting is the cheaper option. Now I get it, life is a roller coaster and we are all at different stages of the game. So when it comes to buying or renting a home, it's not just about the upfront costs. There's a whole lot more at play here that could occur that is outside of your control and it's not black and white. We are talking interest rates, insurance premiums, property taxes and inventory. That's a lot to consider. Here's the deal. If you are not planning to stay in a place for more than a decade, renting is the cheaper option. Bottom line, if you'll not be in it for at least seven years, renting is your money-saving mate. That's because when you are buying, you are not just shelling out for the house itself. There is a whole army of costs sneaking up on you like a bill collector. We are talking closing costs, commissions, title fees, and a bunch of other expenses that add up faster than you can say mortgage. These suckers can go down about 6% of the purchase price. So unless your property turns into a gold mine overnight, you're gonna be waiting a while to cover those costs. Renting is also better if you are sitting on a hefty down payment that could be making you some serious cash elsewhere. For example, if you are running a business or have access to a good investment where tying up $40,000 in a not liquid asset is gonna cost you more than the long run, then that's a sign. And here's a no-brainer. 
If you've got a hunch that the housing market is about to take a nosedive, renting is your best bet. With the current housing crisis waiting to happen, prices could be falling any second now. And who wants to be left with a sinking investment? Not you or anyone in the Needs Your Wealth Club. Oh, and watch out for those interest rates. They're climbing like monkeys on a coconut tree, making it a real challenge for people to keep up with their mortgage payments. Foreclosure rates are on the rise, and that's no joke. So before you tie yourself down to a long-term commitment, have a solid plan in place. You don't want to be waving goodbye to your hard-earned cash, do you? Remember, failing to plan is planning to fail. Don't just take my word for it. Crunch those numbers yourself. Follow the steps I've laid out and let me know in the comments below what you got. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and spread the love by sharing this video with your crew so they can also be part of this amazing community. As always, keep up the good fight and be wealthy.